and I, this is our 12th service like this with you all. I remember the first one. Uh, I was just uh, a guy just, we actually weren't even officially here yet. It was uh, January 1st was our official first day, but we were, we were being used all the same. And uh, the pastor at the time asked me, would you come and help with the music and sing? I said, absolutely. And then he be, got sick and couldn't sing. And I hadn't seen the music. And for those who know guitars, anyone who wrote a Christmas song usually hated guitarists because they're so, they're very, oh, yay, there we go. <laughs> and Taylor was here. Where is he? Oh, he's back there in his costume already. And Taylor was on the piano. I was on a guitar and we got through it. <laughs> so this is uh, hopefully a little more prepared and a little more relaxed. So we want to welcome you tonight as you're finding a chair. We want to start with prayer. If you would pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come here to revisit this story that began clear back in Genesis 3 with you promising a redeemer. Thank you, Lord, that we have watched the prophecies. We've seen the things happen. And now we celebrate the advent of Christ. I pray for each need in each heart today. And Lord, that we would leave here different, having noticed what you have done and celebrating what this season really would be. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll invite you to sing a song with me uh, as we sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. play is not that long, so I would invite you to go ahead and stand with me, and let's sing together. Oh, come all ye faithful. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful.
chosen to join us for this presentation of Stories of the Savior. My colleague and I have been discuss discussing the birth of Jesus, and we have decided that it doesn't really start in the New Testament. Quite right, you see, it actually started at the beginning. So that is where our presentation is going to begin. At the beginning. Yes, at creation to be exact. You may be wondering, what does the birth of Jesus have to do with the creation? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was Him. Nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. into a woman, the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. You may ask, why do we bring them up in a Christmas presentation? Yes, why are you bringing them up in a Christmas presentation? Well, it all started with them. They are the first story of the Savior. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delightful to the eyes, that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate and she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. 
Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I have heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, so I hid myself. And he said, Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Sounds like the blame game to me. Yes, but by their disobedience, the human race now needed a savior. That's why we wanted to do this presentation today. Our presentation is called Stories of the Savior because we are telling about different people in the Bible and their stories of the Savior. Exactly. I have this chart that can help us along the way. Fancy. I know. So who's next? Noah. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And the Lord said, I will blot out man who, whom I have created from the face of this land, from man to animals to creeping things and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord.
so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For Christ also died for sins, once for all, the just for the unjust, in order that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which also he went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison, who once were disobedient, when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah, during the construction of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. And corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Adam and Eve have a story, and so does Noah. Who else? We're going to move on to Abraham. I love his song. Abraham's story of the Savior. And in your seeds all the nation and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Jesus came from the bloodline of Abraham. So Abraham was Jesus' great, 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 great really great grandpa. I guess you could say it like that. But they also said that Jesus came from David. Should we go to him next? from the line of David. And that leads us up to the actual birth of Jesus. He 
raised up David to be their king, concerning whom he also testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. From the offspring of this man, according to promise, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. Oh, Jesus came from the line of David. And that leads us up to the actual birth of Jesus. We skipped a lot of people in the Bible who have stories that led up to the birth of Jesus. Yes, but if we showed every one of them, we would maybe still be presenting by the time Jesus came, when, until Jesus came the second time. So we decided just to show a few. That makes sense. I would probably get hungry. We're going to move on to the people who had a personal story of the Savior. There are many people who have stories that directly relate to the birth of Jesus. Let's start with Mary's story. She is the best place to start when we're discussing the actual birth of Jesus. Her story was a deeply personal one. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary's story starts with her being told that she has been chosen to be the mother of the Savior. That truly is an amazing story. This is where John's story is started as well. John's story started before he was even born. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will give him the name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. And he will turn back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. And it is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now at this time, Mary arose and went with haste to the hill country, to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it came about that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed among women are you, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of the Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. John's story of the Savior continues, but that will have to be for another presentation. Right you are. We were just talking about the stories of the Savior as they have to do with his birth today.
Joseph's story fits in here. Joseph was questioning whether he should take Mary as his wife when an angel came to him in a dream and told him that it would be okay. The angel told him, And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. And Joseph arose from his sleep, as did the angel of the Lord command him, and he took her as his wife. Joseph's story is that God chose him to raise his one and only son to be his father here on earth. Gosh darn it. That is an incredible story. Can you imagine raising the Son of God as your very own child? The pressure. And the pleasure. Just like it is raising any wonderfully gifted child. We're going to move on to the innkeeper. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census would be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quintilius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child, while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That didn't mention an innkeeper. It does say that Mary gave birth in, to Jesus and laid him in a manger. Do you know what a manger is? Sure. It's like a trough that animals eat out of. Where do we usually find troughs that animals eat out of? In barns. What's another name for a barn? A stable. Someone has to own the stables, don't they? Yeah. That's what I'm calling the innkeeper. He was the owner of the place where Mary and Joseph stayed and where Jesus was born. Right. He has a story of the Savior. He didn't know that by telling Mary and Joseph that they could stay in his stable, that he was giving housing to the Son of God. Wow, what a thought. Yes, he was able to provide a place for his Savior, and he didn't even know it. This is where the shepherd's story fits in also. Oh, wait. Everybody join in with us this silent night.
This is where the shepherd's story also fits in. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will be for all of the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. There will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then, and see this thing that has happened to which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph, and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they, they made known the statement, statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at these things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as been told them. Simeon, who also had a story of the Savior. He was told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he saw the Savior. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out him the custom of the law, when he took him in his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bond servant to depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. He was actually hold, able to hold the Savior in his arms. But let's not forget about Anna. Her story was right there with Simeon's. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Pauline, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years and had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, serving night and day with fasting and prayers. At that very moment, she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all those who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. So that concludes today's presentation. Of course, you all know that this evening's presentation is only the beginning of the story. This is only the beginning of the stories of the Savior. There are so many people who have stories of the Savior. What's your story?
Dan, who has put in, I don't know how we would begin counting those hours, so <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, what's coming to you now is a candle uh, with a little shield on it. There's nothing magical about that. It's just a time that we'll bring down some of the light and distraction of this room and focus more on uh, the basic technology of the candle, meaning let's focus on many of the things you see behind you, or behind me, pardon me, that will say, this is the story, not the things that we will or won't do, That's, and it's okay what you're doing for your holiday. It's just that, is this the true story in your heart? So a couple brief instructions, the candle, uh, you'll watch your young folks, uh, if you can help them not dribble the wax, and there's someone who will come and light your candle for you, if you would uh, bring yours to theirs, and if you're not sure how that works or would like to be reminded, we have a really nice wax spot that reminds us each year of that, <laughs> so uh, we don't need another, but uh, we want to invite you to that. So I'm going to begin, and as I begin lighting a candle, I would ask that a few others <laughs> Take your candle, and if you would then light other candles, and so I'm going to have someone straight this way. So while we're doing that, we'll sing the 1960s song, It Only Takes a Spark to Get Out. Now, I believe we have enough ambient light, thank you, Seth, to just go ahead and do that. So. It is our privilege to gather with you and just to, to watch this story told by our young folks and others. It's our privilege to have gathered with many of you each year at this time on Christmas Eve. And I know full well there's other things that you could be doing now. But you've come here and you've wanted to look at this story again. And I'm sure we've heard it many times this week, if not other times or in some other form. But today we're here. So as we just sit here quietly, enjoying the, the quietness of this, you may enjoy just looking at your candle flame. You may enjoy looking at some decoration that is about. But I would ask us to say, Lord, you have told your story, beginning in Genesis, and today we're celebrating the part where the Redeemer has come. Not as just a, a baby, a, a prophet, as John was. No, this is the second person of the Trinity. It's Jesus. And then he will grow. And he will have a ministry in his 30-year-old age. And he will take that opportunity to share of truth and he will be rejected by some and all kinds of things. But you know what? He went to a cross and was punished, not for his own sin, because he was perfectly sinless. It was your sin. It was my sin. And it was his love that caused him to do that for you. So now as we look at these symbols that remind us of his advent, we think of the end of the story, if you will. I would ask that you look in your heart with me and think, you know, this candle might be small, it's not a lot of flame, but certainly as we look about, as we all are sharing our light, uh, we probably won't take the trouble, but I think we can turn almost every light off and be reasonably fine in here to see what's happening. The Bible calls us to be salt, which we know gives flavor to food as well as preserves it. It also calls us to be light. And your candle here is burning beautifully. You're adding to this event. You might even be feeling a small amount of warmth. But the idea is your candle, please don't test that if you would, uh, for those who are thinking about that. Um, you are lit. You are doing the thing 
that we're supposed to do. Now, how about the daily life? How about the life beyond tonight, tomorrow, uh, throughout the next year? Are we being a light? Now, if you notice this light, uh, we won't go into the parking lot or send someone out, but we'd see their light. And that's about all we would see. And it would allow us to guide to it, much like your light does as well. It's not about the brightness of the light. It's about the consistency that it is light. Isn't that neat? That you are reflecting who God is. And the Bible, has, as we said this morning, says that we are his workmanship, created for good works in Christ. And the best part, he's already created for you. Isn't that neat? You're not an accident. You're not a piece of biology that happened to land. No, you're a creation of, the, of, the God, of God who created all things. Would you pray with me? Father, we take this candle. We gaze upon it and see that your truth is as our candle, a singular truth, burning bright and giving light, guiding the lost in, showing the path to those who are following you. Lord, I pray for each heart here that this holiday takes a new and special meaning beyond maybe what culture and location has shown us. So we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in the interest of safety, I'm going to put my candle out. And I'll invite uh, some who would like. We'd like to sing with we'll close with one more song. And uh, if, I'll need just a tiny bit of light, Seth, if I can get that from you. When you're done with your candle, what do you do with it? Well, you can blow it out when you feel like it. Something that I find interesting is to take the paper that is on it. And if you want to take the whole candle home, you're welcome. Uh, check with your parents if you're a young person on that. But you're welcome to take that. Oh, maybe take the paper, write a little something that was meaningful about this time, Put it in a Bible as a bookmark or something. So feel free to do what you like. The rest of you who want to go ahead and get rid of that, there will be a box or a tray or something back there. So let us sing Joy to the World. Uh, let's try What a Glorious Night. Yes. Tim, I think we're going to need you back here.
rehearsal is a joke, but it's not a joke tonight, is not leave that song there. So, oh, a glorious night. I heard declaring your truth and your love for us. Let it be more than an exercise, but a transformation of what you're doing in each life here. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for coming. Stay if you can. Uh, there's plenty of cookies and refreshments, and just uh, enjoy yourself. Take some oranges and stuff with you, and, and make sure you fellowship with, with folks a little bit. We did have one announcement.